We recently saw a uh, home services business get a penalty inside Search Console for actually purchasing links. This is crazy because this was the first time that we'd seen this, maybe ever. Like, like we've seen some versions of manual actions before. I think this was the first time, at least in years, that we've seen a business get penalized explicitly for buying links. Uh, we studied this case. We got tons of really interesting insights from this. Joy, let's uh, let's share some of these insights, some of the findings that we found from analyzing this this home services company that got penalized for buying links. Yeah, this case was so fascinating to me because I haven't looked in one of these in years. Like, I actually asked on X, "Has anybody seen a manual penalty? And when was the last time you saw one for links?" And I had like no responses. People were like, "I haven't seen one in a really long time." And then earlier this year, Google just handed out a whack load of them. So I was actually seeing a lot of uh, influencers that are kind of uh, black hat. They were getting slapped with manual penalties. And it happened right around the time of the March core algorithm update that crushed a lot of these um, kind of affiliate content sites. And so we had a small business that got one and we saw the warning show up. And it was really interesting because they're a home service business. They're a small business. Again, like really unlikely to have that type of business get one of these. So I instantly wanted to look at like, okay, how bad is their link profile? Like how bad do you have to be for Google to issue one of these? <laughs> and the quick answer is pretty dang bad. Pretty dang bad. Clear cut, explicit, like no doubt about it type stuff. Yeah, and there was a lot of really fascinating things that we found when I was analyzing the links and, and some of the patterns I saw. One of the interesting things that I saw was when they first got the penalty in March, the rankings didn't change. And that really shocked me. I was expecting them to like go off a cliff because it's a manual penalty. We didn't see that kind of drop off until the June spam update happened. So I found that really interesting with the way that algorithm updates work and people often think like, oh, I got this penalty or I'm doing this bad thing and the impact's immediate. It was not immediate in this particular case. And Joy, you mentioned, uh, you, you specifically said rankings there. I assume with this case, uh, like traffic was the same issue, like traffic didn't decline either, right? So so rankings and traffic held steady post penalty. Okay. Yeah, and again, I'm looking, uh, I was using Ahrefs for this. So you can easily see in the chart here where their traffic starts taking a hit, um, which is tied to the rankings. But yeah, it wasn't when they got the penalty, which was in March, it was two months later when the spam update happened in June. And this is definitely different because if I remember correctly, it's been a while, but the manual actions that, uh, like, like I think I had the pleasure of, of going through a whole manual action and helping a business owner with it in like 2015. And my memory of that was it was, it was instant. Like the penalty came in and the site was, was hit hard and fast and, and immediately. So th this is interesting. Yeah, it's terrifying. Like I remember in the days of when the penguin algorithm update first happened and like lots of people were buying links and they just got hammered. But it was like you said, very instant. So this one was kind of fascinating. Um, I will point out something. These links that this company was buying, uh, they worked. Like you'll actually see these two lines correlate here. They're referring domains go up like crazy. And I mean, they really go up for like crazy. So this is part of the problem is they go from, you know, like zero <laughs> to uh, like 87, <laughs> really, really a natural pattern. Uh, businesses don't generally get that many links, especially a home service business that services a small city. Very, very unusual. Uh, and they go with from zero to 87 in a very short time frame. But then you see the increase in their ranking and their traffic. Like obviously it was working. So that's why they did it. Yeah. I would like to throw in, Joy, uh, I did not spend as much time researching this as you did. Um, but if I remember correctly, I think I got the notification originally and I sent it over to you to dive into. And I talked to the business owner just, just to get a little bit of information. Uh, we, we were able to talk to them. And they told us the company they were using for link building. Obviously, we're not going to mention it, but like it was a really well-known um, company that, that deals with link building. So I think the cautionary thing I'm just trying to insert here is like, it doesn't matter if you're working with a link building company that's got a good reputation and like everybody's using them. You really have to do your due diligence and like know what they're doing. Yeah, and I this is this is also an interesting trend. Like, their uh, the rankings seem to be recovering nicely. 
<laughs> with the August core update. So this is one of those things where I'm like, people are so afraid of link building because of these manual penalties. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be afraid of them. They're they're not great. You don't want one. Uh, it, it's not quite the kiss of death that people make it sound like. Um, but again, this is one case. I would love to hear about more. I just don't come across them often. So if you deal with these kind of penalties or you've seen sites get penalized, I want to know what types of sites they are. Uh, what were they doing? Like, leave us some feedback in the comments and um, we'll be sure to reply because I would just love to hear more stories about this. Um, but back to these guys and what they were doing. So I wanted to know, like, what types of sites are these? Like, obviously, we want to see what they're doing so we can avoid it. Um, and when I looked at their sites, it was like glaringly obvious that these are not high quality sites. Like they were littered with ads. Like you literally can't even see um, the content on some of the screens without like, you know, Xing out of several things. So here's an example of one of the sites that they got a link from. There's ads everywhere, like pop-up ads, kind of disrupting things. This it's is the a worst. common trend um, that I see with sites that are both tanking with some of the algorithm updates that have been happening recently but also sites that uh, you probably don't want links from. So I know internally when we're like evaluating whether or not we want a link from a site, this is one of the things we look for. Like, does the site look like it was literally made to make money from ads and nothing else? And if that's true, probably not a good target to get a link from. So would that be kind of the first thing you would suggest looking at is the, is the ads? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to look at, but it is definitely one of the things that I've seen as a pattern um, that shouldn't be ignored because this is not this is not great content, right? So this is the type of site that Google is trying to kind of go after. Um, and again, I've heard a lot of people talk about um, in the affiliate space ads and the correlation there. It's not something I can really speak to because I don't I'm not in the affiliate space, so I don't have affiliate websites to look at and tell you what trends I'm noticing. But I have heard from others um, that this is a trend that they've been seeing that ads ad heavy sites are getting hit with a lot of the recent updates in the last year. I have a feeling people are watching this right now and they're thinking, uh, oh, the irony is that ad is probably part of the Google Display Network. <laughs> There's a lot that's ironic about some of these updates. And again, I think this is kind of going back to going back to this graph here. It's interesting to kind of see this reversal thing happening here because mm -hmm. they have this like tanking in June and then Oh, look at that. They're actually doing okay, even though they had a manual action. That's really, really interesting. Do you know, Joy, uh, it, I don't know if you had any follow-up conversations with this business. Had they gone through any work to, like, like did, do you know if they did a disavow? Did they have their link building company go and like remove any of these links? Do, do we have any of that insight yet? No idea. Yeah. So okay. we had nothing to do with their link building, uh, nor did we help them with any of the recovery for it. So not sure. I mean, definitely filing a disavow is the action item you want to do if you've had a manual penalty. Um, but I'm not sure if that helped lead to the recovery or not. Cool. So one other thing that I noticed with their link profile is that they were getting links from sites where the person that posted their article is also posting about things like gambling and crypto and all kinds oh. of industries that are, again, yeah. on Google's radar for being high spam. Yep. Wow. Okay. No surprise. The final pattern that I noticed was that when I pulled in some of these sites and put them into Ahrefs, <laughs> the graphs for the referring domains and organic traffic are going in opposite directions. This is a clear sign that your link building strategy is bad. You're getting more links and your traffic's declining. <laughs> it's not what you want. But this was the pattern we saw for the sites linking to them, which basically tells me that Google is devaluing the site. Therefore, all the links on that site are also being devalued. So why do you think Google caught this particular business? And uh, like, I'm sure there were others, but you know, why them? Like, why did this business, what were they doing specifically to get caught? Tell us, tell us what you think there. Yeah, so the main two patterns I believe that led to them getting caught was one, the volume. Like they go from no links to like 100 really quickly. And 100 might not sound like a lot. In the world of local SEO, that's a pretty high number, especially in like a month. So that's the first thing, really obvious patterns that Google can detect. The second thing was the, the types of posts that they were doing. So people were going out and they were using guest posting as a link building method. So they're posting content on all these other content sites. When I looked at the content that was being posted, it's the same stuff, just reworded. Like they put it likely through an AI system that just reworded it slightly 
and then posted the same article on a different site. In some cases, it was verbatim, word for word, posted all across the web on all these different sites, which is very sloppy and very easy for Google to detect. So I think the word joy uh, scale, because th there's, there's a, a recurring theme here between what we were just talking about and now, and that's the word scale. Uh, so I think that's a really important thing for anyone watching to keep in mind and for ourselves as we're doing this stuff, like that is what Google's looking for, patterns, things at scale. Um, yeah, th that's a really important thing to, to keep in mind here. Yeah, I really think as an SEO, you have two options for link building. You either do it at scale and you kind of throw stuff at the wall and, and something will stick and you'll likely see your rankings increase. I mean, it worked for these guys. We saw that graph, it went up. Um, that's not the approach I would take. I think that's the more risky approach, but you can do it fairly cheaply because you can hire people on Fiverr and you can build a whack load of links and likeliness is some of them will actually matter. That's one approach. That is not my approach. My approach is the more methodical, thought-driven approach where we pick and choose very carefully what sites we post on, have a very small list that make it through with all our criteria, and then we spend time like getting one to two links on those sites and I don't do it at scale. And we can actually measure the impact. We've seen clients go up in ranking over and over and over again from one link. I believe that's the safest way to do it and also the best way to do it where it will maintain whatever you've gained long term. I don't really want to have strategies with SEO for our clients that are going to undo themselves in a couple of months with the next core update. And I think, Joy, you are touching on something here, which is good, sustainable, long term SEO involves building a foundation and doing things that are going to last long term. Like you just painted a picture here. On one hand, you've got take five minutes of your time and go to Fiverr and you'll yeah. get something that gets you an immediate impact, but there's no foundation. It eventually just goes away. Or the other extreme is you spend three years trying to figure out all of this stuff. But the fruit of those three years is we now have something that can produce results for, for businesses we get to work with. Like forever, essentially, as long as we keep going back, retesting, uh, all that kind of good stuff. So I think that's a really interesting um, dichotomy here. Yeah, and good news for those that are watching, it doesn't, it's not gonna take you three years because <laughs> now I'm talking about it in a short video. Um, so hopefully you learned something, but if you have questions, we are gonna be monitoring the comments. Please drop us a comment um, and we'll be sure to answer any questions that you have.